Hello, and welcome to this video on Liquation Cracking in Wells. To begin with, let me start by sharing the screen so I can follow along with the PowerPoint that I'm going to use. My name is Girish Kelkar, and I am a welding consultant operating as WJM Technologies. So today we're going to talk about liquation cracking in wells. To begin with, let's start by reviewing what are the different weld zones uh, when a weld is made. Here I'm showing you a schematic cross-section of a butt weld with a fusion zone uh, used for bonding the two parts together. The fusion zone is the volume of material which was completely molten during welding. Then there is a zone between the fusion zone and base metal where the properties of the material have changed but did not fully melt. And this includes the heat affected zone. The heat affected zone is where the properties of materials have changed and that it can include mechanical properties, electrical properties, corrosion, fatigue, any of the properties uh, could be affected. So that is the heat affected zone. Now heat affected zone itself can be have various different classifications within it. Uh, but the one we are interested in today is the partially melted zone or the PMZ. Partially melted zone is a narrow zone right next to the fusion zone, immediately next to the fusion zone, within the heat affected zone, but right next to the fusion zone. As the name implies, partially melted zone is a one where the entire material didn't melt, but part of it did melt. And usually what that when that happens, what you see is the grains did not melt, but the grain boundaries can have a low melting phases and which did melt during the welding process. There are two different types of hot cracks. Hot cracks are cracks that form immediately after welding. As soon as the weld cools down to room temperature, the cracks are already there. Some cracks might be visible from the surface, uh, but for some of them, you may have to look inside, which can include uh, X-ray or cross sections. So here again, I'm showing you a cross section of a weld and you can see the fusion zone. You can see cracks in the fusion zone. These are the solidification cracks. And we had covered that topic in a separate video already posted on this YouTube channel. Then there are other cracks called liquation cracks. Now these cracks form in the partially melted zone and they can occur near the toe of the weld where there are a lot of stresses near the root of the weld where there are also a very high stress location, but also can occur at other locations. So there are three different types of liquation cracks. The crack which I've shown labeled as number one is perhaps the most common type where the crack appears to start right at the boundary of the fusion and partially melted zone and extends into the PMZ or even onto the heat affected zone. That is the most common. The second one which can occur is right at the toe of the weld where the crack might appear to start from the surface of the free surface of the weld in the near the toe. And then it extends into the PMZ or the heat affected zone. And the third one is closer, uh, is in the heat affected zone or in the partially melted zone, but is not directly linked to the fusion zone. So that is inside, but not directly linked necessarily. So here again, we have a lot of stress in number one, uh, one, two, and three, the very high stress locations. And of course, anytime you see a crack, you know for sure that there was tensile stress perpendicular to the crack. That is the fundamental requirement of crack to form. Keep in mind that liquation cracking can also occur in previous passes of a multi-pass weld. So here I'm showing you a weld cross-section with a single pass, but there are a lot of welds are made multi-pass. So there'll be one pass and then another pass on the top to build up uh, the size of the weld. And in that case, liquation cracking can occur in the first pass, which has already been made uh, and due to the heat from the second pass. So that also can happen. Let's look at examples of uh, liquation cracks. This is liquation cracking in resistance welding. These are two sheets uh, of Incoloy, Inconel uh, 718, uh, which have been welded with resistance welding. And you can see a nugget over here. This was a fusion nugget. So this volume 
would have been in molten condition uh, during the weld. Then you can see a faint outline of the heat affected zone, which is not very obvious, uh, but you can see that a little bit. And you can see two cracks over here, one starting over here and here, and then what looks like extending into the heat affected zone. So these, uh, this location at the edge of the nugget is a common location to see heat effect uh, liquidation cracks. You are unlikely to see cra liquidation cracks on the top surface of the nugget because of the compressive stress uh, during applied during the weld. So here again, the fact that we can see the liquidation cracks over here, that implies that there was tensile stress. So there is compressive stress in the middle because of the welding. And what is happening is these two sheet metals are trying to are trying to separate out as the compressive stress goes in over here. And that results in tensile stress towards the edge of this nuggets and which under certain situations can produce cracks. So if you're doing making a resistance weld and you make a cross section, look for liquidation cracks on this edge or this other edge of the nugget. Liquidation cracks can also occur on the toe of the weld. On the right, I'm showing you a schematic of a fillet weld and showing a enlarged portion of this location toe over here in an actual weld cross section. The toe of the weld also happens to be a location of very high tensile stress because as the weld nugget cools, it pulls towards itself and pulls away from this surface over here. So there's a lot of tensile stress on this surface. And in the presence of low melting phases, uh, cracks can initiate and grow into the heat affected zone as shown over here. These are multiple cracks that you can see. In fusion welding, typically, you see these cracks when the filler metal solidifies faster than the liquidation zone uh, phases. So if the filler metal is solidifying faster than the liquidation zone, and the difference can be very small between when these two solidify or the temperatures at which they solidify, but even a small difference in that can produce enough stress to cause cracking. And this is uh, quite obvious when you weld Aluminum 6061 with 5356 filler, uh, which is a stronger filler than 4043, but it does can cause liquidation cracks. Uh, so if you are seeing an issue with liquidation cracks, uh, you should switch to 4043 and that you can avoid liquidation cracking. Another location uh, for likely uh, for liquidation cracks is the root of the weld. Here again, as the weld is made and it solidifies, it is trying to contract and it is pulling in this direction and it is uh, the rest of the material, if it's holding stiff, then can cause a lot of tensile stresses at this location over here. Uh, this is a laser weld and I'm showing you a enlarged, uh, enlarged photograph on the right of this location over here and you can see these horizontal lines, which are liquidation cracks uh, adjacent to uh, the weld but not starting from the surface of the fusion zone as is typical in type number one cracks. <clears throat> so here we are seeing liquidation cracks in the heat affected zone, but not directly linked to the fusion zone. If you look at this well, this is again a butt well, and you have some portion of the weld was not completely fused. So this is what is called a partially joint partial joint penetration weld. And you can uh, have more information of these two concepts in the video on types of welds in weld design playlist on this YouTube channel. So this is a partial joint penetration weld. That means it did not completely penetrate the whole length of the interface for the butt joint. And one way to avoid these liquidation cracks uh, is to make a complete joint penetration weld. So you don't have these free zones over here where there is high tensile stress. So there are multiple reasons why uh, liquidation cracks form. Uh, they can form with uh, welds with any type of processes as I've shown uh, fusion welds, um, in resistance welding, in arc welding, in laser welding. But there are ways to avoid them as well. 
So there are the, here are some of the steps you can take to avoid uh, liquidation cracking. First of all, if possible, use a, uh, avoid using a heat-treatable alloy. Uh, heat-treatable alloys typically have additives in them which produce low melting phases. And uh, one way to avoid liquidation cracking is to avoid heat-treatable alloys. Unfortunately, that's not easy all the time because heat-treatable alloys are used commonly because they are very strong and you need the strength for a particular application. If you have to use a heat treatable alloy, uh, prefer to weld it in the annealed condition. In the annealed condition, they have larger fraction of low melting phases at grain boundaries. So if you have to weld a heat treatable alloy, avoid welding it in the annealed condition. Another thing you can do is use low heat input processes or very fast processes so that you can make the fusion weld and solidify it and have almost no heat affected zone, which is quite possible, which is quite possible with processes such as high energy density processes such as laser welding and electron beam welding. I have seen laser welds and electron beam welds where it's almost impossible to tell if there is any heat affected zone uh, that can be that narrow. Uh, if you are using a, a fusion weld, making a fusion weld, especially with arc welding and you're adding, it can also be laser welding, uh, but if you're adding a filler alloy, then you should use an, a filler alloy which uh, solidifies a slower than the liquidation zone. So use 4043 instead of a 5356 alloy when welding 6061. Uh, that will avoid liquidation cracking. The other uh, techniques you can use is use welds that reduce tensile stress in suspect locations. So if you have a weld design where you are likely to have tensile stress, which is always going to be the case and near the toe of the weld and the root of the weld. So to avoid cracks in those locations, instead of uh, recommending a PJP weld, which is partial joint penetration. I uh, recommend a CJP weld, that is complete joint penetration. And the distinction between the two is described in uh, the video on types of welds in the weld design playlist. Another thing you can do is produce a convex bead. A uh, convex bead, as it cools, pushes out uh, the stresses. So if you have a convex uh, profile on the surface of the weld in a fusion weld, then that produces compressive stresses and those compressive stresses can be pushed towards the toe of the weld and that can help close the cracks uh, during cooling. So you have multiple choices to avoid glycation cracks, but the main thing of course is to find out where they are to begin with and that requires careful cross-sectioning and analysis of the weld sections. There are videos uh, in this Weld Nugget channel which refer to some of the topics that we have already discussed and if you are not familiar with those uh, concepts please review these videos uh, which will give you some clarification of some of the ideas that we discussed right now. And that includes introduction to physical metallurgy, introduction to mechanical metallurgy, well section analysis, which talks about how sections are made and reviewed, uh, different concepts in phase diagrams, uh, solidification cracking, and types of joints and welds where we review CJP and PJP welds. Well, thank you for your time. If you're interested in learning more about welding and joining, please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the subscribe button at the bottom left below the screen. And there'll be a black button with subscribe written on it. And videos on specific topics are in the playlist on this channel. There are multiple playlists, including for resistance welding, arc welding, welding metallurgy, welding design, and laser welding. Uh, wishing you the very best in your efforts to learn more about welding and have, wishing you a very good day. Thank you.